everybody to another wild feral day. We never know what we're going to get in the roulette that is open forum debate via Twitter spaces. No, this is open forum. The way it works is anybody who wants to come on uh, can present whatever arguments they want, but please make them arguments. So um, you don't have to do arguments in debate. You can ask questions if you want to. Uh, just let me know at the beginning if you want to present an argument or if you just want to ask questions. I'm fine with whatever. The purpose of this is not to be mean to people, not to humiliate people. Um, but we also don't put up with a bunch of nonsense. So if you bring a bunch of nonsense, you might get some nonsense in return. But if you want to present an argument, if you want to present a, a case, why you think X, Y, Z is the case, maybe it's Islam, maybe it's Protestantism, maybe it's Calvinism, maybe it's Arianism, Evangelicalism, uh, Paganism, Platonism, whatever. A ring, that ring girl is up. What's up, ring girl? Lord of the Rings? What's going on? My precious, you got the one ring? Hit unmute. Hello? What's up? I thought you were a girl. It's a ring girl. Yeah, I've just got one question. Uh, All right. The dude's in a bathtub trying to do what I do. All right. Only I'm allowed to be on a live stream or on an audio chat in a bathtub. Nobody else can be in a bathtub. We don't tolerate that around here. Dude's over there dripping in the bathtub. Blip, 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 blip. No bathtubs allowed, boy. Get out of here with your bathtub live stream talk. You know, I'm the one that pioneered that. Literally, years of hours of bathtub live streaming. You can present your case. I will give you the floor. But if you don't make arguments, I'll call you out. So that's how it works. So if you want to present something, within reason you can't talk for five hours straight you can't monopolize everything it's not a machine gun spam opportunity for you to spam quran quotes right but it doesn't work like that we had last time i had a dude trying to do that last time right presenting an argument just present your case or you know orthodoxy is wrong because it doesn't have this 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 uh you know it contradicts in here 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 uh the bible's no good because it says blah 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 and here's the reasons why, blah, 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 right? That's it. That's all you got to do. So we don't need um, your psychological reporting, right? Like the atheists always come on and they tell us a story. Okay, We're, we're not interested in a story, dude. We want to know the arguments, the reasons for why this or that is true or false. Everybody understand that? The difference between an argument and reporting a psychological state or giving your feelings, your desires, your impressions, whatever. If you want to uh, say you think I've done something wrong or criticize me, I don't care. That's fine. You can say whatever you want. I, I'm uh, tough-skinned enough and have done this long enough that I'm fully aware that there's plenty of people who don't like what I do. So you can say that. I don't care. Just make the arguments. Just explain in a reasoned way why you don't like this. It's not my position. I just want to see how you would answer it. Okay. Um, so, uh, correct me if I'm mischaracterizing you in any way, of course, but uh, in the past, uh, you've said that the main proof you would use to uh, justify Christianity or prove Christianity uh, and Christ's divinity is the Messianic prophecies. Is that accurate? I think there are strong uh, evidential arguments for Christianity, correct. So I'm not a, an evidentialist, but I, I think that, yeah, we have to use evidences in Christianity for sure. Um, and yes, I, th I think that one of the strongest classifications of evidence is, is the, are the Messianic prophecies, sure. <clears throat> so how would you respond to this argument against that? Um, so the... Council, the councils that compiled the Bible were obviously after Jesus had lived and died. Mm -hmm. um, and they were a post hoc justification for the theology they had built around Christ because they could select the books that uh, reinforced the idea that Jesus was fulfilling prophecies and reject books that might contradict that position. How would you respond to that? Well, first thought is that the texts of the New Testament um, 
far precede any of the councils that discuss canonicity by centuries. So we're not relying on um, arbitrary selections from people uh, at the Sixth Council or at Trollo or whatever. We, I mean, the, the patristic writers for centuries have citations to whatever the early texts were. So if, if even if we don't have autographa, you know, Irenaeus, Justin Martyr, Tertullian, these are all early attestations to the veracity of the documents. And if you look at, if you look at somebody like Irenaeus, for example, early in the second, or, uh, in 180, uh, we have him not just citing many, many, many gospel texts, many, many uh, Old Testament texts as well. We have him referencing the public testimony of the tradition in the churches with apostolic succession. And he chooses Rome as his preeminent example because it's doubly apostolic. And he says, anyone can go and check to see what the tradition is at the church of Rome, where we have the great founders, Peter and Paul passing on the apostolic tradition. So um, it's a really missing the actual process of history and patristics for a person to make an argument as if later councils just sort of like secretly, uh, you know, swiped these documents and, and snuck them in there. When you have centuries of church, I mean, if you look up here, I mean, you've got thousands of pages of writings from the first, uh, you know, three centuries prior to Nicaea. And we can look and see what after Nicaea uh, compares in terms of theology to pre-Nicaea. And we see that they teach the same things, right? I mean, Athanasius is not teaching anything different than uh, St. Cyprian. St. Justin Martyr is not teaching anything different than uh, St. Basil, right? So people post and pre-Nicaea have a continuity of doctrine, which shows us that the canonicity is something, canonicity is a decision that presupposes some lists of canons. And, and mainline textual scholars will point out that there are multiple competing canyon, canons of scripture in the first several centuries, right? So, so in other words, the, the, the argument presupposes a process that isn't even correct or accurate with history. Right. So to boil it down, you follow the paper trail back far enough and you're going to see a continuity. Yeah, but it's not just a, it's not just a paper trail. It's also, uh, that the liturgy itself, uh, has, uh, its own sort of documentary evidence presented within it, within the liturgical tradition. There is, uh, evidence within the patristic writings, which is distinct from the liturgical tradition. Um, and there's also the ancient, uh, New Testament texts. I mean, there are texts from first, second, second and third century. Uh, we don't have the autographa, but we do have early texts, which show continuity. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, it's great can I ask it because I'm trying to figure out who is this like a Muslim or like a Seventh Day Adventist type of argument? Like, who is the person that makes this kind of an argument? Oh, uh, I don't know. Theoretically, let's say an atheist concedes your point on uh, the transcendental argument for God and says, "Well, I don't believe in the Christian God just because you prove the necessity of a God to ground things." I see. So, just. That's yeah, well, I think that, right, that but, but yeah, I see what you're saying, but there's an important uh, addendum point to tag, which is that the transcendental argument doesn't prove any kind of God, it proves a certain kind of God. And so that's why I make the argument that it proves the Trinity. It doesn't just prove like generic God. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm sure I can look up one of your transcendental argument videos and hear you, uh, uh, yeah, so if you want more, so if you go to the video that we did critiquing Phaser, uh, Universals, uh, comma, Phaser, comma, J. Dyer, that talk gets into why the Trinity is the precondition for knowledge, ethics, and metaphysics. Okay. All right, I'll look into that. And I, by the way, I covered it in the last stream, too. So the first 20 minutes uh, or 30 minutes, I covered the Stan Eloy book, um, Theology in the Church, which has a whole chapter on why the Trinity is really the ground of reality. Okay. Cool. I'll look into that. Okay. Um, Anything else? Uh, just a concluding comment. Sure. You know, I think it's a little disgraceful you didn't include Louisiana in your Southern States video, being that we are the best, being that everyone wants to move here. <laughs> I expect a full apology within 24 hours. So <laughs> that's isn't it. Bob, isn't Bob, didn't didn't, Mom, didn't Mama say Bob Boucher is from Louisiana too? Who? That's part of the reason why we have to be mentioned in any conversation on the greatest states. Bobby Boucher, I got a statue of him in my backyard. <clears throat> He's huge. 
I don't know about that, dude. Dude, I went to uh, New Orleans, and that place was a hellhole, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> New Orleans doesn't count, okay? Oh, I, what? I like, that's like the most famous thing in Louisiana. <laughs> you're like, it doesn't yeah. count. I just on everything outside of the French Quarter. Okay, the only thing that you get, right, the only thing you get props for in Louisiana is Nicolas Cage's Pyramid Tomb in New Orleans. That's it. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you All know right. you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, are you talking, you're not talking about his haunted house? Well, he has a, he also bought a tomb. It's a pyramid. I got a picture with it. Where's that? When you go into, you know how uh, downtown New Orleans has like four or five uh, old graveyards where all the graves are above ground? Yeah. yeah, Okay, if you go to the one that's, quote, the oldest, there's a giant pyramid tomb that he had built and he, or he bought it in there. What? Yeah. I've never heard of that. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, Yeah, look it up. (laughs) Hey, another feather in the cap of Louisiana. There you go. That's, yeah, that's the (laughs) one point you get is Nick Cage's tombs. Hey, Jay. What's up? Thanks for taking another question of mine. Sure. Um, I don't think you're mean, by the way. Uh, I don't care. It's okay. You can think I'm mean. It doesn't bother me. Well. I mean, I've already said that I'm a satanic. I'm a satanic drug lord. I think. I think being a satanic drug lord includes being mean. So how's that? I mean, I wouldn't be a very good satanic drug lord if I was not mean. If I was nice. And by the way, the Muslims too, like. After four debates, public debates with Muslims, they're still saying I'm scared of debating Muslims. Like, how many times do your people have to get debated before you fall on the the whole thing of that I'm scared? And so, oh, you didn't debate Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, because Jake's a joke, dude, and he got shown to be a joke. As I said all along, that dude was a, that dude's ridiculous. He would never say what his school was. He flip flops and changes his schools, and all the other Muslims called him out on that. So Jake is a joke. Doctor Branson made him look ridiculous, and that's exactly what I said the whole time of why I wouldn't debate Jake. And Jake said, "You better give me special treatment. Uh, I want a cross examination where you don't get to talk, and I get to you get to shut up, and I get to." That's not how cross examination works. And by the way, they still don't seem to understand this. They're like the worst. Just totally for, debate is just foreign to them, right? It's like they don't they they can't get it, right? So you get to cross examine me, but I get to cross examine you. That's a classical debate thing, and the Muslims can't get this, right? You can read under the debate where the debates where we do that. He won't. Uh, he interrupt. Why he interrupt? Why he interrupt? Because it's cross examination, dude. And the other person can interrupt me. Good grief. I guess Matthew left. He didn't have anything to say. So, again, Muslims, atheists, they have no fear in stepping up to the plate to do debates. Do any of them complain about me being mean? No. The only people who complain that I'm mean are the bold crusaders, the Roman Catholics. Yeah. Oh, by the way, so people in the chat, uh, yeah, I forgot about Cosmic Skeptic. I mean, we asked that dude uh, on Twitter a long all the people that everybody says you need to debate, we've asked them many times. Okay, so EMJ has been asked multiple times. Uh, Cosmic Skeptic has been asked. Um, uh, who else? Who are the Muhammad Hijab was asked? He ignored it. Uh, he ignored it. it. Had like 500 likes and thumbs up and or retweets. I should say likes and retweets, and he ignored it. Um, he could Kikachu, whatever his name is, ignored it. Um, all those people ignore the, the 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 requests or the the offers. So I don't. Know. People need to get with the program. Like all these people, we've already been doing this for for a long time now, right? I mean, I asked Ibarra for years to come on and do a debate, and he would never do it, and then said I wouldn't debate him. And so I went on their stream. You notice I we go on their stuff and they're terrified to come because they say that if they come in our domain, they're going to get cheated. They're going to get edited and all this. Come on, dude. Uh, nobody's going to edit you if it's a live stream, dummy. Can't edit you. You're going to get muted. You're going to mute me. I mean, Su- Suan Sona, I wasn't f- afraid of Suan muting me in the debate with Trent. All you got to do is have a formal debate. If it's formal, then you can't do trickery. Uh, by the way, inspiring philosophy. He backed out of the debate because I was too mean. 
right? Who else backs out? They all back out, dude. They're all such cowards, dude. These people are soy men cowards. That's why. That's what it is. Uh, they're passive aggressive theology nerds who just can't handle it. And so I come from a different domain, right? I come from the world of philosophy. And if you're in the world of philosophy, even in today's, you know, cucky universities, you still get the importance of debate. You get the importance of having your ideas challenged, challenging other people's ideas. I mean, we, we were doing debates with professors in as sophomores. And so when I come into out of the world of philosophy and come into the domain of YouTube uh uh, apologetics and they're all such soy males so afraid of a debate and they all just want to just present how pious they are and they're just so pious and uh i hope y'all will just pray with me and we just need to love each other and we're not polemic you are polemical it's a it's a facade dude what are you talking about you're not polemical of course you are right ibarra lofton saying they're not polemical everybody knows your whole thing is to stop people from converting to orthodoxy that's all you talk about all they've talked about for like what four years now is don't go orthodox by the way please come to our uni eight parishes